Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today's guest is Calgary City Council candidate for Ward 4, Angela McIntyre. Angela, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be here. Uh, uh, my first question to all my, the candidates that are running is this. Where does your sense of duty come from? Um, I'm going to ask you if you mean duty to serve. Duty because... to serve. Yep, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm asking. <laughs> Just because I've... Uh... I've heard your interviews before. So, you know, in, in the context of that, uh, I think Bob Dylan says it best when he says, you got to serve somebody. So um, why not let it be in the service of dignity, in the service of justice? Uh, I come from a family that uh, finds equity very important. And uh, my kids, I think, are probably my main reason why I've decided to run for city council because they are such engaged citizens and the myth of youth apathy no longer holds water. So when I'm trying to explain to my kids why there's inequities or, or why there's things that we don't agree with and uh, we're not doing anything about it, I, I, it made me decide to step up and, and try and make a difference. So what are you seeing now? Uh, you've put your name forward to be the next uh, city councillor for the uh, great ward of Ward 4. I, I say that to all of the uh, councillor candidates who come on because their ward is always the greatest ward. But <laughs> why, now? why now? Why did you decide 2021 would be the good time to get involved? What inequities that you just talked about were you seeing? Or was there another underlying issue that you thought, I need to address this or this needs to be addressed at City Hall? I think that um, City Hall needs to make itself more relevant by listening and communicating. And they've done a great job. Lots of councillors have done a great job. But when I'm walking around talking to Ward 4, talking to my neighbors, they don't, they don't feel listened to and they don't, they don't feel heard. So um, I think the role of City Council has to go beyond what your particular stripe is, but how can you be the conduit for what your constituents want? And these groups, when you talk to these groups that have been working and researching and studying different issues within their area, for instance, Highland Park um, is a great example of a struggle that they've been going through with City Hall our stormwater system through the Confederation Park Creek. Um, these are the people that we have to go to to understand what their research is in order to present that in a meaningful way to council. And if that's, if the wishes of the constitu constituents aren't being presented in a meaningful way, then they won't understand it. Because as you said, every ward is a beautiful ward and every ward has a lot going on. So how do you do that? How are you proposing to make that change, to give a little bit more communications back to the people of Ward 4, but not only Ward 4, because while you are there to represent a ward, you are also there to represent all of Calgary as well. So how do you communicate back to the residents and work with residents in a more engaging way? And what is your proposal to do that? Sure. Yeah, so the way that we live now, um, it's almost impossible not to communicate. Uh, we can tweet, we can Facebook, we can podcast, we can Zoom, we can Skype. So there's a lot of ways to get a hold of a city councillor and let them know what their, thought, their thoughts are. And so engaging with these citizens has to be a number one priority because I can go in understanding that the state of the economy is one of the biggest issues we're facing right now and that we have to support innovative diversification strategies. We have to help our downtown rebuild, but we also have to understand what's happening directly in our backyard, what's happening with our green spaces, what's happening with density. And so in order to communicate, I think the first thing to do is to listen. And so listen, learn, take action. So if we can open all the avenues to, prov to provide those listening opportunities, 
then when I'm sitting in city council chambers, I can have a clear understanding of what the wants and needs are, and I can present that. So opening the channels, I think, is the main thing, creating ways to engage. Um, you, you, you've touched on a lot of subjects there that I want to dive into because this is the great thing about the, the, the reason I did this show is to dive into policies, dive into issues that are, are being talked about. Um, let, let's talk about engagement. Um, one of the big things that I hear from Calgary residents from uh, here in Ward 10 to Ward 4, down to Ward 13, up to Ward 2, or Ward 3, I apologize, um, is they want a city hall that works for them, that is easy to navigate. Do you believe that doing work with the city hall or a resident going to city hall is access, a uh, city hall is accessible, but also it allows for people to do work and business on a play, level playing field. Well, that's one of my concerns is the idea that um, we do have wonderful, um, just really smart people working on different issues, but it's like trying to read a legal document. <laughs> It's written in a way that perhaps if you're not a lawyer, you can understand. So for instance, if somebody's supposed to read a 131 page <laughs> document and have a clear understanding of it, that, that gets rid of that level playing field. I think um, we need to break down what we're doing into more digestible, you know, easy to understand ways. And of course, there's never going to be anything that everybody loves, you know, um, yay, we all love that decision. <laughs> I, you know, I, I understand that clearly. And I understand that, uh, that you can't necessarily suit everyone's needs, but we really have to, you know, you're talking about a business case. And if we're talking about land use development and multi-use buildings, City of Calgary has been working hard to reduce that red tape. <clears throat> and I think that we can do better. And our communities, our existing communities, like Ward 4, have such great resources that need to be nurtured and taken care of. There was a, a wonderful place in Montreal where it was a community hall during the day, but at night, this, it was just a fantastic Spanish restaurant and a music venue. And so when they had this building that wasn't being used at night, they utilized it to help a small business run, to develop community, to support the arts. And there's so many innovative ways that we can go about making sure that what we have within our communities is being utilized properly, that the red tape so businesses can come in and start a little business like that without, um, you know, that possibility of, of uh, going under in the first year. We need, you know, especially coming out of COVID, we really need to support our arts, our event spaces, our, you know, anything to do with restaurants. <laughs> so if we can um, reduce that red tape, make sure that people are understanding how to walk through those channels so it's not as intimidating, then I think that city council can become more relevant to business owners. Well, you, you mentioned on the million dollar question that's literally on everyone's mouth these days is the pandemic. Um, Calgary has been hit with two major events in the last 15 years, the economic downturn, and then we went right into a global pandemic. Um, how do we as a city, but also as the next city councillor for Ward 4, but also next city council, ensure that nobody gets left behind? People of Ward 4 are struggling. People all across this, uh, uh, this city are struggling. They are having a hard time paying bills. The jobs aren't here. They, they're picking up and leaving. I'm not sure on your street, but on my street, there's four, four sales signs that have gone up in the last week because they're leaving the community. How do we help people stay here? But also, how do we help people stay in Calgary as the next city council? 
Sure. And there's a, there's a lot of questions within that, Chris, and, yeah. um, and I'll try and answer them all. So I've grown up here within this boom and bust cycle. And, uh, you know, anyone that's been around through those years understands that um, just the, how hard it is to never quite know whether it's going to be balanced or stable, if your job will remain, if it will stay. So, the, we, you know, diversifying our economy is so important because, and I know that uh, that's banging sort of the same drum that that everybody is, but it has to go beyond that too. You know, I, I worked with the Confederation Park 55 plus activity center. So working with seniors, one of the things we did is we surveyed our seniors to see how they were doing through the isolation because isolation is a real problem before the pandemic for seniors. So we wanted to know when we had this large amount of seniors that had to be isolated, how were they doing? And overwhelmingly, they said they were getting through it by helping one another, by neighbors helping them, and by them joining in to help others. And so I think we need to take a real grassroots approach to community building so that we can support the people that are on the ground trying to help with food, food pantries, food scarcity, but to also create opportunities for people to stay here. So when you talk about um, people leaving, that's a real big concern for the students of SAIT and the University of Calgary, that they've chosen to educate themselves here, but they don't feel like they have affordable housing options when they leave, or that's why they leave, because there's no affordable housing. And so we really need to work together as a city to create those opportunities and not be afraid of density in a way that we have been. I like to think of density more as community building. So when you think back to what I was saying about the isolation of seniors, if, if we could have a really easy path for them to create perhaps a suite in their house, a legal suite in their house, university students living with them and helping with the snow shoveling, helping with the grocery shopping would enable them to stay longer in their house, would bring in an income for them. And like, let's be honest, we need people, you know? So um, where are we for our questions now? So it was- You've hit on most of them. It just the, the question is, how do we ensure though? How do we ensure that no one gets left behind in a recovery? Because like I said, this pandemic has seen, has shown a large gap in the wealthy, the 1% compared to the other 99%. Um, how do we ensure as city council, ensure the recovery is best for everyone and not just the few? Yeah, of course. And that's a great question. You know, um, it's uh, hearing a lot of things about people that are able to work from home is a lot different than the people that are there on the front lines. I think we need to um, respect those frontline workers. We need to make sure that our basics are in place so that we have enough um, basic services, first of all, to run our city. So our firefighters are employed, that we're not losing firefighters because we're not putting enough money into those particular services. And to ensure that no one is left behind is a, is a great question. And how do we make sure that um, when it comes to the mental illness and the, the way that people are suffering through this pandemic because of this economic inequity and just the feeling of, of nobody caring about them? You know, if, if we're the ones that are dying and we're the ones that are the frontline workers, you know, how do, how do we make sure that as a community and the city of Calgary that we respect all of us, regardless of our jobs, income, nationalities? Um, yeah, I, I love that question and I'm going to keep thinking about it because I don't, I think the main thing is, is to go back to the listen, learn, 
take action because we need to know why they are feeling left behind or why they are left behind. And then we need to work together to solve those problems. Um, you, you just mentioned the key word about the next set of questions I have is listen. Um, we are a few months into this election because of the election started in on January 4th because the nominations because the change of the elect, uh, municipal governing act and the Alberta municipal elections. Um, what are you hearing at the door? What are you hearing from residents? What is the biggest concern of the people of Ward 4 today? It's definitely listening. It's definitely that people aren't feeling heard, that they feel like they're reaching out and they're not getting the responses that they need from council. On certain issues and or just in general listening? In general listening, but each community has its own different set of issues. Um, for instance, we just spoke of Highland Park and they're, they are, um, they are only at 4% green space. And so they're afraid that they're going to be taking the burden of density because they have a majority of renters in their neighborhood. And they don't think that's fair because they need to maintain their green space. And I agree. I'm hearing a lot about the green line. So the green line is so important in so many ways, but we have to look forward to the future of what we want the green line to be. So it's not only a transit access point, but it's a corridor that's welcoming and safe. And that, um, so when my kids are getting on to the C train, it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable or unsafe. That it can be, we can take lessons from you know, other parts of the world that have, have created beautiful transit ways and understand that that's a major, a major importance as well. One of the things we've talked about a few times is listening. As the next city councillor for Ward 4, you will have to make multi-million dollar decisions that sometimes may not affect your uh, ward as much as other wards. As a city councillor, you have to look at a budget that is for the city and not just for your ward. Yes, you need things that will go into your ward, but sometimes you have to make infrastructure agreements or decisions, green space decisions that are for other wards. And sometimes your ward might be forgotten. Are you comfortable saying no to say, I will stand up and I will, def I will defend Ward 4 to ensure that we are adequately represented in the budget each year? And, or are you saying, or you, would you say that you would be more in the opinion that what's best for the city is best for Ward 4 as well? Well, that depends on the decision, absolutely. But I am incredibly willing to stand up for Ward 4 in a way that's what I'm, that's what I would be there for. Um, but it has to go beyond the city as well. We have to look at this, any decision with the environment in mind. We have to look at any decision with design in mind. And design is so important. You know, we've, we've gotten into this trouble because of our design and we can get out of this trouble with our design. And when I speak of this trouble, I mean the way that we created downtown Calgary that worked at the time, it worked at the time. And so now we have to move forward. But when you think of the legacy that we're leaving for our children, it can't, it can't be a knee jerk reaction to how is this just gonna suit today? It has to be for the city, for the people, for the long term. And so, Yes, I absolutely will stand up for Ward 4 because that's what people are expecting of me. But we do have to take a look at environment and by design. You have mentioned the environment and green spaces a lot in our first 20 minutes of the interview. I want to get, your, I want to get you on the record and ask this question. How can we grow the green spaces in our city when land isn't available? development, especially in established communities like Ward 4, mm -hmm. land isn't available to create a new uh, green space, expand it. So how can we ensure that we have adequate green space in our communities going forward? 
Sure, sure. And so um, I don't think there is any real option to grow green space. But I think that we can utilize green space in such a better way. For instance, there's small bits of green space right by a coffee shop by me called The Bullet. We, you know, just very inexpensive um, seating areas, uh, innovative ways to attract people to these green spaces. And we're already doing it. You know, there's there's some funding out there right now for people to create beauty around them. So I understand that we're working with a small amount of land, but if we are doing that, then we have to make sure that we're working with it in the best way. And coming through COVID uh, as a outdoor walker myself, I'm of course right by Nose Hill. I've never seen as many people utilizing our green spaces as they have right now cross-country skiers um, you know roller skaters skateboarders and so i'm really hoping that calgarians recognize the asset that is our green space you are the successful candidate on october 18th uh you were sworn in as the next um can uh, counselor for ward four what is your first priority? What is your first priority that you will try to implement? And not just from communications, but the one priority that you will want to get in front of council right away. Yeah, that's that's a really great question. And it has to be the some it has to be the economy. We have to work towards supporting our businesses to ensure that we are all thriving. And we have to work towards creating help for the people that couldn't, you know, they're just holding on by, um, you know, as we all know, just holding on by the tips of their fingers on the side of a mountain face. And that's how we all feel. You know, how do we, we don't want to lose people. We need to create an economic package that will help businesses thrive. And what are you hearing from business? What what type of needs are what type of wants are they asking for from you as the potential next counselor? Because I'm assuming you're talking to business leaders as well, not just residents when you're door knocking. So what are you hearing from them to say this is what we can potentially do as a city to help them? Sure. So you know, strategies around pedestrian friendly main streets are really important. So when we're talking about um, moms walking down the street with their strollers and they can't access uh, different areas because we just didn't plan it that way. I think it's very important that we create these welcoming atmospheres and make sure that we're accessible to everyone when it comes to the stores. When I'm speaking to business owners, it's more of a, provincial issue when it comes to um, just lacking the understanding of where do we sit? Um, you know, I've speaking with uh, Candace Mosley from Airborne Dance. She has had to refund and sign up and refund and sign up all of her students two or three times. And that's really hard that, you know, that takes um, money and it takes planning and scheduling in a way that, uh, you know, was definitely not anticipated. So I think the main thing is to have a clear path forward so that people understand where, like what the regulations are and where we're going. So municipally, you know, the people, they want to be able to get back to the events they want to be able to get back to the festivals. They want to be able to open their doors. Um, but so we, we really need to, city council has done a, a pretty good job, but we need to stand up to whatever provincial government is in place and make sure that Calgary is being heard, that uh, our voices are important and we need better leadership.
So there's an area on your website under your platform uh, that I want to get a little bit more clarification on because I read it. I understand it. I just want to make sure the people of Ward 4 and who are listening to this understand this. Um, on your platform page uh, on McIntyreWard4.com, the link in the show notes will be, the link to it will be in the show notes. You say success should be measured in terms of the health and safety of all Calgarians. What do you mean by safety? Sure. So um, when we talk about safety, one of the things I think about is women. So I'm one of five girls. I have three daughters. My husband has four sisters. And so I am surrounded by brilliant, uh, smart women. But unfortunately, there are some places within this city that aren't necessarily safe. So there's very easy ways to fix that. For instance, lighting, it's a very easy thing to do to evaluate where lighting is low and where women feel uncomfortable and to make sure that they are safe when they're accessing the city. So my daughter is you know, heading downtown from Charleswood and on the way to downtown, she had over eight harassment cat calls from men. And so we need to have a zero tolerance policy so that Agreed. my children, me, I mean, it's the funny, I always, it's not really a joke, but I'm 45 now. I don't, I don't get that, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I would shout back, you know, I'm, I've gone through it all. I'm 45, but it's often the vulnerable, marginalized gender identities and young women that are harassed by this sort of environment. So that's, that's one example. We could create such easy, affordable ways to fix these things. Um, we could have training within our uh, frontline workers. So our bouncers, our taxi drivers, our Uber drivers, so they could recognize, hey, this girl isn't safe and do something about it because there's no need for half of our population to feel unsafe in any way in our city. So that's one safety issue. But when it comes to our firefighters making sure we're protected, do we have enough boots on the ground for them? Do they feel safe as they're managing, deciding to serve our city? You know, they could do anything else in the world, but they're, they're deciding to, you know, help to make sure that we're safe. Are we helping to make sure that they're safe? You know, do we have enough things for them? Um, safety when it comes to police and mental health. Of course, um, nobody likes the word defund the police. I think that the real issue is getting the right people in the right jobs and any of the detectives or um, legal staff lawyers, judges that I've talked to have said, this is a great idea. Why, why wouldn't, you know, we don't want to have to answer these calls when we're not best suited for them. Why not open this up? And I think that people get really caught up in an either or idea. And there is no either or, you know, it's, it's the best for all of us moving forward. So just to clarify, I just want to make sure that I have you on the, I, I've heard you correctly. You are not in favor of defunding the police, but reallocating the money towards uh, hiring mental health workers, hiring or putting people in the proper positions. Is that what I'm understanding correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got skilled, um, skilled workers that uh, are, are trained on this. And I understand that the police are trained on this as well, but they have a lot on their plate. They are there to protect us and they are working hard. So why not take a little bit off their plate and ensure that the people of Calgary are, are getting the right, you know, the right treatment and uh, getting the right people in the right jobs. Um, 
the one area that is the major topic across the city right now is the green line. You mentioned it briefly beforehand, but transit, proper transit is needed. Uh, it helps uh, low income families. It helps Calgarians from uh, every uh, ward uh, get across this great city. Um, the province just came out recently and said that they were going to be helping with the funding and the provincial, the, the business strategy. If we find the correct money and the, the, the budget stays to what it is. Um, do we need to get this done sooner rather than later, the green line, or can we wait a few more weeks until the next council is in? So that way we can look and see, okay, is this going to be the actual budget? Because we saw with the arena deal that, it went over budget. So can we be uh, content with the budget dollar amount that it is right now, or should council be ready for a potential increase in the budget? Well, unfortunately, I think that council should always be ready for an increase in the budget because there's a lot of factors around, um, you know, that determine what a budget is when you're talking about building materials, when you're talking about labor, so of course that budget is always going to be um, a little bit uncertain, but we need to get it done and we need to get it done now. This has been a long, this is, and, and, and it's a long and confusing story of why, how, when, who, but we need, an, we need to advocate to the provincial government to make sure that they're held accountable for what their promises are for um, you know what the dithering and the withering and the you know the dancing <laughs> around, and and we need to understand that we want to be a great city. Calgary is a great city already. We need to make sure that we are an international great city, and you cannot be an international great city without great transit. For a number of reasons, but. We also need to, and I'm gonna go back to this that we talked about earlier. We also have to ensure that we're building it by design so that those corridors are safe. Yeah. So that the businesses that we think allow to be along the corridor um, can represent the best of our city so that we, uh, we make sure that, um, you know, my kids can be there, you can be there, my grandmas can be there, you know, that's the main thing. And so moving people around daily is so important. And if you've ever had to take those three buses in the winter, especially when you're, you were a teenager and you never wore your coat done up. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I, 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 this is the part of the interview that I enjoy a little bit because I, I love hearing the, the response that I get. I'm going to ask you this question. Why should you be the next city councillor for Ward 4? That's you a have, great question. You have as long as you want. If you want to take two minutes, you can. If you want to take five minutes, go ahead. So why should people vote for you, but why should you also be the next city councillor for Ward 4? <clears throat> I should be the next city councillor for Ward 4 because I'm willing to work hard, listen, learn, and take action. And, and what does that mean? You know, what does that mean when people sort of see these, these platitudes? But what it means to me is supporting the hard work that people are already doing within our community. And when I'm talking to our constituents, they're not talking about what they're doing personally, they're so willing to tell me about their neighbor that floods the rink every day. They're so willing to tell me about a program that they have that pairs seniors with youth to shovel walks and the youth get their first paycheck. They're, they're immediately ready to tell me about all the great works that are happening within their community. And as a counselor, you need to be a conduit for that information. So if something's working really well, in one area, we need to share that with all our communities and we need to share that with all the cities. And that also means paying attention to what's happening in the other wards. So I would love to be able to come in and say, I will solve everything and we will all dance 
together, you know, in happiness <laughs> and throw gold coins up. But I'm hoping that if people are aligned with the way that I think that community, equity, and innovation are the most important things for us right now, then they'll vote for me. And if they don't believe in what I believe in, then they won't, and I wouldn't be a good representative for them. So, you know, knocking on doors as I was getting my nomination signatures was a was a bit of a, a test for myself too, because I wanted to make sure that I was aligned with what people were thinking. That, uh, you know, that, that people do believe that we should all live in dignity, that we should be um, making sure that all Calgarians belong, that economic prosperity for all of us is important, for maintaining our students here is very important. For our children to want to raise their children here is important. And overwhelmingly, I heard that they do. And so that, that uh, gave me the courage to put in my nomination paper and uh, just start trying to share my story about what I, what I hope we can do together. And we're all, we're all politicians in a sense. We're all advocating for our, you know, for our own space. And so if people feel like, you know, they can be, if they wanna be heard more, if they wanna come with ideas, I'm willing to listen. And I'm willing to work hard to make sure that those ideas are being heard as well. So. That's why I think I would make a great counselor. Hey, and everyone has their own reasons and it seems like you're in it for the right reasons and I'm glad to hear that. Um, but with everything going on, uh, this will be coming out the first week of August. Uh, I have got to ask the question, how can people get involved? How can people help you? How can people uh, like pitch in and support you? What, what are the methods that you're out there on? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, website? What, what are some of the options that they can get involved? Sure, sure. So I'm all over. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter. I have a website, um, Instagram. My daughter's making me a TikTok. I only have one video. I don't quite, I'm not quite as clear on it as I should be yet. Me either. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things we really want to do is get out into the community and make sure um, we're, we're still, as we move through this campaign, that we're still uh, representing people's needs. So we're going to be doing some pop-up bike events. I've got a bike team that uh, will be fixing tires and handing out bike safety and talking to people on bike pathways as they go by. We're going to be, um, of course, doing more lit drops. People, if anybody wants a lawn sign, call me up, you get it. Um, you know, and it's, it's such an interesting time to, tr luckily I've never campaigned before. So in a pandemic, it's not new to me, but it has been very hard not to be able to be in front of people and um, knock on doors. And so I would love it if anyone wants to talk to me to create meetings that I can gather with them, that we can talk, that, that would be huge. Certainly. Uh, for my listeners and the viewers, um, the links to Angela's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, not TikTok, because I do not know how to link that because I do not have an account. <laughs> so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and her website will be in the show notes. Head over, give it a like, follow her, uh, check out her website. Like she said, like Angela said, if you want to reach out to her, I'm assuming your contact information is on your website, uh, your email and your phone number. Absolutely. Not my phone number, but uh, my email. Yeah. Your email address. So uh, reach out to Angela. Angela, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we're about the 40 minute mark and that's usually how long we go. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it.